Patrick's I stayed for my lessons. Good morning and welcome to today's class on uh, the EPMR series. Today we are going to take a very simple topic in mathematics, one which is quite interesting. And then we look at how we can solve basic questions under such a topic. So this topic is really related to finding directions and it's very vital when it comes to navigating uh, a plane or a ship. So if I want to move from one location to another location in the air or over the sea, there is the need for me to know which direction I should turn either the ship or the plane at any point in time. And that is where this topic comes in very handy. So we call it a bearings. So bearings are just a way of locating directions. This time around, we are going to use the application of angles because if you are talking about direction, then we should be talking about angles. So if you are watching me and you are having a dream of becoming a pilot, captain one day, then um, this topic you must really get to understand it. So the basic idea is to find out how to read these bearings, how to read these directions from one town to the other. How do you go about it? So we are going to do this by way of examples. Once again, taking all our questions from the BBC past questions that have come so far. So the little thing you must know is that anytime you're talking about bearings, you will be asked to locate the direction of one point from another. So the key word here is from. So anytime you are supposed to get a bearing, you are looking out for this word from. So that should help you to know that anytime you want to get this, you must station yourself at that position. So let's assume we have two points on the map. Let's say this is point A, and then there is another one here. Let's call this one point B. For me to get the direction of point B when I am standing at point A is what you are calling bearings. So usually what we do is that we draw this cross line through the point where we are looking for. And this is supposed to be our coordinates or our Cartesian points. So here, when we take the cardinal points, we know that we have the north, the east, the south, and then the west. 
So in the same idea, we are going to use it. So you can see that anytime you pick a map, down there somewhere in the legend, there is something like this, which is showing you the north part of your map. So we do the same thing for point B, which is also this way. Now, to read this direction, you are going to take the measurement. So you take measurement You take measurement true clockwise directions. Starting from the north. We know that when we are taking angles, we are told that you can start when you put your protractor on the line. You can start either from this side or that side. If you take from here and you are taking your angles, you are supposed to go anti-clockwise direction, which is this way. So when we are measuring angles, we start from the zero degrees, which in our case would be on the east point, and then you measure through anti-clockwise directions. However, if we are doing bearings, the rule changes. We are saying that at every point in time, we start from the north, which is this point, and we take your measurement through clockwise direction. So this way. At every point in time, this is what we are doing. So you are taking your measurement from the north through to wherever you are looking for, but keeping to clockwise movement, keeping to clockwise movement. Okay. So if I tell you that uh, there is somebody facing somewhere and how many degrees might the person tend to get to another direction, depending on what instruction I'll give you, you will be able to tell us which location the person is. So basically these two ideas is what you are going to use in today's class. You are going to make this cross bars at the point where you are told and then you are going to just measure the bearings for us. Another thing you must also notice that in bearings we measure measurements in bearings are taken in three figures, in three figures. So when you are calculating or you are measuring your bearings, you will be getting measurements from zero, zero, zero degrees up to 360 degrees. This is very important. Anytime you are asked to calculate or measure a bearing, you must make sure that you are leaving your answer in three figures. Because this is the kind of bearing we are doing. It's called a three-figure bearing. So you make sure you leave your answer in this form. There was another form which has to do with the coordinate and the angle measurement. In that case, you have to quote maybe the north, you put the angle maybe 60, and then another direction. So this one will be for directions. But the one where we are just going to measure without putting the north, the east, or those directions, those cardinal points, we use the three-figure pairing. And that is what we are going to do today. Let's begin with something very simple. This one is just on directions, not really on angles.
Okay, so this one is a teaser to find out whether you know your directions. Just want to find out whether you know your directions. So here we are saying that Kwame is facing west. Through how many degrees should he turn anticlockwise to face north? Kwame is facing west. Through how many degrees should he turn anticlockwise to face north? So here it means that if you don't know your cardinal points, you are going to have a problem. If you don't know your cardinal points, there's always going to be an issue. So once again, this is the cardinal point. When you have this cross, the top one is always the north. And opposite to that is the south. And then to the right hand side is the east, and opposite to that is the west. Okay. So at this time, we are told that Kwame is facing the west. So we mean Kwame is facing somewhere here. And the person is saying that true, how many degrees should he turn anticlockwise? So in this point, at this point, you want to find out which direction is clockwise and which direction is anticlockwise. When you talk about clockwise, you just picture how the, the hand of the clock moves. So you know that the hand of the clock moves this way. So that is clockwise direction. But this time we are told that we want to move anticlockwise, so counter clockwise. You are moving the opposite direction to clockwise direction. So that should be somewhere in this direction. So if Kwame is at this point and he wants to get to the north, how many degrees should he move? So anticlockwise is going to move this way, move another, and then finally move from this side also to this side. At this point, you have to know that the reason we are bringing this cross is to help us get some angles that we are already aware of. So we know that from uh, angles, anytime there is this square thing here, it gives you a 90 degrees. So we have a 90 degrees here, we have another 90 degrees here, and we have yet another 90 degrees here. So we have 90 plus 90 plus 90, and that is going to give us 270 degrees. So it means that if Kwame is facing west and he turns through 170 anticlockwise, he will face the north. He will face the north. So this is basically what you are going to do today. You are going to check what the bearings are going to be. This was just on normal directions, it has to do with angles. Now we look at examples from bearings. Okay, so we are looking at how to represent variance on a diagram. 
So this one says that a boy walks on a bearing 070 degrees. 070 degrees. Our tax here is represent his direction on a diagram. So here what you do is that you assume the boy is standing somewhere on a certain point, let's say this one. Now what you have to do is that you have to get your cardinals. So we have this one and crossing it is that you have your not here. You have already stated that anytime you are looking for bearings, you are taking your measurement through from the north true clockwise direction. Now we have been told that his bearing is 070, that is 070 degrees. So from here, we know that the angle between the north and then the east bar is 90 degrees. But out of this 90 degrees, the boy is walking on the 70th one. So it means that from here, up to somewhere here, the boy is there. So we cross like that. Meaning that the angle from the top here up to this line that you have drawn is 70 degrees. And the down part here is 20. So the boy is moving in this direction. And this bearing is what we call 0, 070 0 degrees because we are moving from the north and we are making an angle of 70 degrees before we get to the direction through which the boy is moving. So this direction is what we need. So this diagram represents a boy walking on a bearing of 0, 070 0 degrees. Okay, so this one says that in the diagram below, the bearing of B from A is, so this is what you have here. Like I said, anytime they ask you to find a bearing, what you are looking out for is this way from, and that is where you are supposed to stand. So here, we have the bearing or the direction in the, at point B. The direction of A is at 40 degrees from the north. 40 degrees from the north if we are standing at B. But now we are supposed to take the bearing of B rather from A. So you leave this part and you shift your attention to this side. You leave this side, you shift your attention to this side. So we want to find out, still coming back to this same line, but now taking the measurement from this north instead. So we move from here, up to here, up to here, and then this way. We know that this part is 90 degrees. This part is also 90 degrees. Now the question is, what angle will make up this remaining portion? 
and we know from angles that anytime you can make a Z shape, there is what is called alternating angles. And we've mentioned that alternating angles are always equal. So I can clearly see that if I pick from here through to that side and then down, I'm going to get that Z shape. So getting that Z shape, it means that this angle here and this angle here are alternating. So if they are alternating, then it means that this 40 degrees is the same as 40 degrees here. In that case, find the bearing of B from A to be equal to 90 plus 90 plus 40, and this should give us 220 degrees. 220 degrees. So it means that the angle from the north true until you get to this line is 220 degrees and that is the combination of these two sides plus the angle from here which is the same as the one here very simple and very straightforward let's take another Okay, so this example also says that the bearing of the jai from the is 270 degrees. The bearing of the jai from the is 270 degrees. Now, what is the bearing of the from the jai? So, let's say we are keeping F for the and we are keeping E for the jai. So the first thing we must look out for is the first direction diagonal. And that one should be taken from FM. From FM. So let's say this is our point E. We are told that the bearing is 275. So from the north, we know that this side, we're going to have to change the direction, the position. So this is my north, and then I know that from this side up to this side is 90. There's another 90. There's another 90, making a total of 270. But I am looking for 275. So it means that there will be some extra five degrees angle here. So let me say this is it. So if that is the case, then it means that here I am going to have my 275, so I have my 5 degrees here. 
Islamic Republic in year 275. And that is from E. So this line is F. And at F, I want to find the bearing of E now from F. So taking it again from here up to here is 90. Then once again, we ask ourselves what angle will be here. So we check for the Z again. So Z, we have one here, we move through this side and then this way. So you can see that this extra angle we have here is what is making up for the smaller part here. So it means that the bearing of E from F is then going to be called the 90 degrees, which is up here, plus the extra 5 degrees, which should give us 95 degrees. But we are told that bearings are always taken in three figures. So it means that finally we are going to get the angle, the bearing meaning of 0.95 degrees. You cannot give your answer this way as 95 degrees because that would be an angle and not a bearing. So we convert it back to a bearing which should give you 0.95 degrees. Okay, so the next question also says that if the bearing of C from D is 240 degrees, find the bearing of D from C. So once again, you look out for the one which has been given to you, and that is the bearing from D. The bearing from D, and you are told that that is equal to 240 degrees. So you locate your D. So this is my D. And at D, I am looking for 240 degrees. 240 degrees. So once again, this is our north. From here to here is 90, here to here is 90. So that is 180. We know that if we add up to this side, that will give us 270. But what we are looking for is 240. So it means somewhere here should be divided. So we divide this side by that. Where this side will be 30. So it means this side is uh, 60. So that when I add this 60 to this 180, 180, 60 should give me 240. So this is our angle. Then it means that this point here is our point C. It's our point C. Okay. Then now we are supposed to find the bearing of D from C. Bearing of D from C. Okay. So now, how do we get it? We need the angle from here to here. So once again, we look out for a Z shape. If we take this 30 degrees here, the 30 degrees here will cover from here and then here. So this small portion is 30 degrees. However, 
when taking bearings, you take our measurements from the north. So from the north, we know that we have to move from here until we get to this side. But the total from this side up to here is 90 degrees. So the bearing of D from C is then going to give us 90 degrees minus the 30 degrees down there, and that should be equal to 60 degrees. So this finally will be written as 060 degrees, and that will be the bearing from C, the bearing of D from C. again we have another problem i think one issue with bearings is always where to start from and then getting the angle there right so here we are told that we have the bearing of p taken at q so taken from q and that angle is the, that bearing is zero six zero degrees so it means this side can be my q and i have my cardinal points here and I know if this is my north, then 60 should be here. So it means this point will be my P, and this is the north. And my task is to calculate the bearing of Q now standing at P, so Q from P, from P. So this. Once again, we know this and this will give us 180. But now we need this extra one. And we know that alternating angles will still remind us that this 60 year is the same as the 60 year. So then, the bearing of P, the bearing of Q from P will then be equal to 180 degrees plus 60 degrees. And that should give us 240 degrees. And this is just a reverse of what we just finished doing here. This is just a reverse of it. We take our last question for today.
Professor suggests to tell you that in calculating bearings, the first one can be put in any of the four quadrants, any of them. So you've taken almost example on all of them. This is the last one. And here we are told that the bearing of X from Y. So this would be my point Y. Let me take it up a little. say my y is here and the bearing is giving us 196 196 this is my north this is 180 once again up to this point will be 270 so I did that uh, 196 from 270 this should give me a 4 this side should give me, let's say, 20, 96. So I have 64. Let me check again. It is 4, 16. Six, this side will be one, then zero. So we are adding the sixteen degrees to one hundred and eighty. So let's see somewhere here. And this small portion is that sixteen degrees extra we are adding. Then this becomes our x. So we are going to find this angle here. And we know that this small portion here is 16 degrees. So once again, we deduct that 60 degrees from the 90 degrees, which will make up this four quadrant. So minus 16 degrees. So 90, 16, 4 here, 7. And that should give us the 74. So now the bearing of y from x is equal to 0, 7, 4 degrees. And this brings us to the end of today's lesson. We'll come your way next week with yet another exciting episode. Bye.